Hi, this is Ruben Lerner, and I am back with another installment of my Python Standard Library Video Explainer Series. And this time we're going to talk about strings, but not the string that you've already seen that every Python programmer knows about. So if I want to create a string, I can say stir, and this is creating an instance of the stir class. And of course, you can say stir of five, and that'll return a new string. Always when you invoke stir, you get a new string back. That's the way classes work in Python. But I'm not talking today about the stir class. Rather, I'm talking about the string module. Now, because the string module is not in built-ins, as opposed to stir, which is, you have to actually say import string. You might be wondering, why is there both stir and string? So the string module, uh, I think long ago, in many, many earlier versions of Python, included in it many of the methods that we might use nowadays in the stir class. But nowadays, you don't need that. Um, what I want to show you today is a bunch of the interesting uh, strings that are actually defined in the string module. And that's how, I know it sounds kind of strange. So what would you need the string module for? for well, first of all, um, let me just show you what we've got. String dot. And let's look at all we've got here. Now you'll see we don't have the string methods. And instead, what we have are a whole bunch of ASCII letters, ASCII lowercase, ASCII uppercase. All right, and then I'm going to show you also a few other, one or two others that are along those lines. And next time I'll go into some of the classes and methods that are available in string, which are again not the standard string methods. So let's assume that I want to find out if someone has given me um, a number, right? So I can say here, you know, s equals input, enter a number, right? And then I want to say here, you know, print, uh, print, I don't know, int of s times three. So if I now say one, two, three, it's going to print 369. Why? Because, well, we got from input a string. Input always returns a string. Put that into s. And I said int s times three. But of course, what if I say here abc? Well, now it's going to give me a value error because you cannot turn it into that. So we've already seen that I can use the isDigit method. So I can say if s is digit. Then we can do this and else print, you know, hey, I cannot turn, let's say, s into an integer. And so now if I say 1, 2, 3, we're doing fine. But if I say here, abc, it will say, hey, I cannot turn abc into an integer, which is true. So isDigit is a nice method for doing that. But if you want to go a little lower level, or if you want to implement your own sort of isDigit, or all sorts of other things, the string module comes with a bunch of built-in strings that you can use to check for that. So for example, I can say here, string, oops, uh, string, sorry, let's look for, uh, let's see, ask you, uh, oh, it actually doesn't have numbers. <laughs> I thought that they did and they don't. Shows you how much I prepared for that. Oh, no, we do, we do. We did. It's string.digits. That's what I was looking for. String.digits, and we have it. I knew it was somewhere in there. And so basically, string.digits shows us these are all the digits. So what you can do actually is, we can actually do this sort of thing. I can say, if it's digit, fine. Otherwise, I can say here, you know, bad characters equals an end uh, list there. And I can say for one character in S, if one character not in string.digits, then we can say bad characters append of one character. And then at the end, I can say basically print, I, you know, unable to Create, you know, turn into an integer because of, and then we can just say bad characters. And so now if I run this, I say ABC, it'll say, hey, you can't do it because of ABC. But if I say here, one, two, three, ABC, four, five, six, it's still only going to show me ABC because as it went through the string here, one, two, three, ABC, four, five, six, it noticed that some of them actually were integers and some of them were not. So this is a sort of thing you can do with string dot digits. We also have string dot ASCII lowercase which is shockingly, right, all the lowercase ASCII letters. And the documentation actually explicitly says this is not going to change. So it's not locale dependent. It's really ASCII lowercase. And string dot ASCII uppercase, right, same thing, basically. I can also say string dot ASCII letters. And that's going to be lowercase and uppercase smushed together. Um, I actually use these quite a bit. If, for example, uh, you know, I want to grab the first 10 letters of the alphabet, I can just say string dot, you know, ASCII lowercase, let's say, until 13. That's an easier way of doing it in some ways, or a more readable way than saying A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on and so forth. Depends how fast you type, I guess. So we have ASCII lowercase, ASCII uppercase, we have ASCII letters, we have, uh, uh, we have digits, we also have string dot hex digits. So if you want to search for uh, hex digits somewhere, you can do that, and then you can say, you know, 
uh, s, well, you can say here, you know, three in string dot hex digits. Remember that we're looking for a string in another string, so you can't say three in string hex digits. That's an integer, and it'll give you a type error. It won't work. We also do not only hex digits, but ox digits. Oct digits, not ox digits. Oct digits. And right, we'll do a three there, and that'll work just fine. What else can we do? We can do string dot printable. And that's going to show all of the printable characters, meaning everything that's not, uh, everything, sorry, that is, oh, it is including white space. So it's absolutely positively everything other than, shall we say, like control characters. Right, so this is a good way to check. Now, remember, some of these are white space. We've got uh, space, tab, new line, uh, uh, this is a carriage return. And then we've got, what is it, vertical um, tab, and one more uh, form feed, form feed and vertical tab which are basically unused since like the 1960s or so. So you don't have to worry about those so much. You can also say string dot white space. And this is actually used pretty frequently. You can see once again, we have you know, hex zero B and hex zero C, which are going to be indeed form feed and vertical tab. Why would you want these? Because very often you want to check for white space. And Python actually uses these or a version of these if you're doing you know backslash little s or backslash big s in a regular expression. It's looking for white space. This is what it's looking for. With strip, Right? If I say here s equals you know, new line, new line, new line, character turn, character turn, space, space, tab, tab, a, b, c. I say s dot strip. So the default is to use all the white space characters. What are the white space characters? The ones listed in string dot white space. So these are the different things that you can look for. And I'm not going to tell you I use these every day, but certainly it's useful to look for these things. Notice that there is no looking for it in your current uh, uh, locale. So if you are using a language other than English, please, who uses a language other than English, right? All right, actually most of the world, but fine. But if you're using a language other than English and you want to be looking for uh, uh, letters or something like that, or even digits in your particular language, the string module is not going to help you here. It very explicitly says it's going to use ASCII. And even when it looks for uh, punctuation, it's going to look for everything in the current locale. Uh, as opposed to, uh, I'm sorry, it's going to look for it in the C locale as opposed to the current locale. All right, I hope this is good. Teaches you something about the string module. And next time we will look at more in the string module at four matters. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll be back soon with more of the Python Standard Library video explainer series.